Hey guys, hello and welcome to Last Eight Super High Yield Concept. This is a new format we are starting out in which we discuss the answer to two questions in a video format. This is more engaging to our audience and it helps understand the answer better. So let's start out with QID 0015, Polymelia. So here's the question just to recap. I'm not going to go through this again, but you can pause the video, read over it once again if you haven't seen this before, and then we'll go on to the answer. All right, so the answer to this question is E, Hox gene. Hox is an acronym for homeobox. The homeobox gene is a 180 base pair long gene. Now, as we know, one triplet, which means three base pairs, translates into one amino acid. So 180 base pair long gene is going to form 60 amino acids. So this 60 amino acid long protein product of the homeobox gene is responsible in forming a transcription factor which is involved in modulating morphogenesis. Now morphogenesis is the production of normal body parts in their normal location which means that if a gene responsible for morphogenesis is abnormal then it will lead to formation of abnormal body parts at abnormal locations and that's exactly what happens in Hox genes so let's uh, read on further an abnormality of the Hox genes is responsible for abnormal limbs and digits the abnormalities could include as it is in this case polymelia but can also be polydactyl ale, syn polydactyl ale, and many other abnormalities in which the digits or the limbs are more or are fused. An easy way to remember this for our audience from India and Pakistan and Bangladesh and Nepal and all other viewers across the world who see uh, the Bollywood film industry is Hrithik Roshan, a very popular movie star has six digits in his right hand uh, that's the photograph I have put in front of you so from uh, Hawks Hawks starts with with H and Rithik also starts with H so you can kind of correlate that in your mind Hawks Rithik H H so next time when you see Hawks written anywhere first thing you gotta see is Rithik all right so the other options are Option A, sonic hedgehog gene. Now, the sonic hedgehog gene is responsible in normal neuronal development. That's what this diagram shows. Normal neuronal development requires a normal sonic hedgehog gene. This is also abbreviated as SHH gene. The SHH gene is responsible for normal CNS development. And you can imagine that if it's abnormal, if it's mutated, then it will lead to an abnormality known as holoprosencephaly. In holoprosencephaly, the cerebrum fails to divide in the midline and there is a huge large cerebrum with only one uh, centrally located ventricle between them. The two cerebral hemispheres do not separate and there is just one huge cerebral hemisphere. So that's the other option. We want you to understand all the other options because you may not be asked Hox gene, you may be asked Sonic Hedgehog gene or any other option. So we're going to go through each of the options one by one and make sure you nail this down. Option B is the fibroblast growth factor gene. The fibroblast growth factor gene is not the same as fibroblast growth factor receptor. That is what is written in the first line. FGF is not equal to FGFR. The reason we wish to emphasize this is uh, extremely popular question to ask is achondroplasia. Achondroplasia is a, the most common cause of dwarfism in humans. Uh, the photo on the right shows a normal four-year-old child on the left side and an abnormal four-year-old child with achondroplasia on the right side. The achondroplastic child has a FGFR3 mutation, that's a subtype of the fibroblast growth factor receptors, FGFR3 mutation. Now remember, it's not FGF, but FGFR. Examiners try to confuse you on this by giving you both options. The first option is going to be FGF, the second option is going to be FGFR. So you, you have to remember it's FGFR and not FGF. 
so uh, option C and D are not so high yield the WNT7 uh, gene is involved in limb development but it doesn't really have an important uh, abnormality associated with it and hence it isn't really asked that frequently the PAX gene on the other hand is also pretty low yield but if you want to remember something then remember that one abnormality which is very strongly associated with the PAX gene is an iridia this is a disease in which the person does not have iris in both the eyes so iris is the part of the eye which gives our eye, eyes the color so that that part of the eye is uh, absent in these people all right guys so the last three options are option a g and h option a is p53 gene the p53 gene is involved with a wide variety of neoplasias in the end in almost all neoplasias the p53 gene gets mutated however specifically if you are asked p53 gene is associated with which neoplastic syndrome then the answer is lee from any syndrome remember that name lee from any syndrome p53 gene the option g is rb gene rb stands for retinoblastoma that's a very well known uh, neoplasia which is involved with the two hit hypothesis if you don't know this well go online look it up the two hit hypothesis this is a very important concept frequently tested the rb gene is associated not only with retinoblastoma but also with osteosarcoma and examiners like to go after this because you know rb stands for retinoblastoma and we have a tendency to forget that it is also associated with osteosarcoma so osteosarcoma is also rb gene the vhl gene which is the last option stands for von hippen linda the von hippen linda syndrome is associated with an array of neoplasias but uh, specifically uh, it is associated with RCC renal cell carcinoma the most it's also associated with pheochromocytomas and retinal angiomas and cerebellar hemangiomas also however the most common association is the RCC renal cell carcinoma below these options is a cell cycle this is just here to jog your memory that the G1 to S phase is being regulated by, uh, by RB gene and P53 gene the G1 to S phase uh, transition is the most important checkpoint in the entire cell cycle so you probably knew this already but if you didn't then just go over this one more time G1 to S phase RB and P53 G all right so now one more bonus question uh, if you know this I strongly recommend you uh, type it out in a comment below this video we will be revealing the correct answer of this question in the comments below so the question is uh, suppose we take this child and we uh, assay its cells and we try to see if the hox gene product is present or not then how are we going to do this which blot will be used to detect if the hox gene product is being produced or not remember this is not a easy question and that's why we put this in here as a bonus question so that this could be your credit point qu question so the options are southern blot western blot northern blot southwestern blot and northwestern blot if you know this just put it in the comment below and we'll reveal the answer soon all right guys so that's it and uh, if you like this video then just like this post as a show of gratitude uh, this is our first video and if you like this then we'll continue forward and we'll make uh, more informational videos. Remember the last aid is and will always remain a completely free resource for your USMLE preparation. We, we bring you the highest yield concepts uh, to your palm each and every day for free. So if you like the work we do just give us a like as a show of gratitude. Thanks and have a good day.